What's up, everybody? Clint here with Classic Firearms, and we've got Matt back today. What's up, guys? Matt back. And the reason we're doing a little video outside here, it feels like we haven't done one of these on a 9130 in a long time. I mean, forever, really. Yeah, yeah, man. So, guys, we just got in a fresh batch of some Mosin Nagants. We got ourselves some 9130s, but we've also got a whole bunch of variations, right? That's right. Well, let's just hop right into it, guys. First off, Mosin Nagants. Like your favorite caliber, right? Yep, 760 by 54R, fantastic caliber. Yep, and also too, we got the shirt to go along with it. Sure. Longest serving military caliber in history. Really? That's I did so. not know that. Yep. I mean, it's still being used, used today, I know that. PSLs and things like that, I mean, they're still using the same caliber. Right, and so, you know, I mean, think about it. The original Mosin Nagant was adopted in 1891. Yeah. Still using that same cartridge, of course, with some some upgrades, variations, and things like that, but yeah. still, still using that same cartridge today. That's pretty sweet, guys. Yeah, so pretty sweet that it's been around that long. And of course, we're fans of that caliber. Absolutely. And uh, we've got these cool little shirts to show it. If you don't realize the Cyrillic writing on here, recognize that writing. It is actually from the spam cans that carry the 762 by 54 right. cartridge. Yeah, you, know, you get those cool uh, metal yeah. spam cans and it's got all kind of stuff on the top. Right. And oh, this is the God. biggest lettering you're gonna see on that spam can. Absolutely, it's guys. Cool. And these are our shirts, of course, and we've got them on our website. And if they're currently not available, they will be soon. Uh, make sure you sign up for the product notifications and then you'll be notified as soon as these shirts come back in yeah, stock. Get an email right in your inbox. That's right. All right, let's hop into it, man. We've got these things here that are Looking pretty sweet. Uh, first one I'm picking up looks like a Tula. You see that Tula star with a hex receiver on it. Pretty nice. And uh, do we know the story behind these? Looks like they've been refinished. Uh, yeah. Looks like, you know, we've got pretty much just bluing that's been kind of thrown on here. Um, or just re-bluing, I guess you could say. Because uh, everything looks, I mean, almost new as far as the bluing goes. Now, granted, I'm still seeing wear and things like that, but looks like they've been you know, yeah. some sort of arsenal refinishing or something. I don't have a, a lot of information about, you know, where they came from, what process they've been through. Like you said, I um, mean, you definitely notice that, uh, for instance, if we look at the, the pitting on this receiver, mm -hmm. you know, it's obviously been blued over. Right. So when it comes to a fair condition, you can expect that you're going to see pitting. You can see it here on the receiver, also some here on the bolt handle. So this would be a good representation of our fair condition. Right. And even so, you know, at some point, it looks like the, the pitting's been kind of scrubbed, cleaned, and then re blued over. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. And the one that I'm holding here is labeled as a good condition, and a majority of what we've seen has just been a fair condition and a good condition. Right? That's right. Yep. And then what we have come across, though, are some that are being called like good or fair cracked, mm -hmm. right? And one of these cracks that you guys might know already, if you are familiar with these, you do understand that sometimes you'll get this, what they call the toenail crack, right? All right, toe separation. Yep, so it's some toe separation. You wanna go ahead and dive into that a little bit? Sure. So these stocks are frequently made in two pieces because, you know, if you have the grain running along the stock, then you end up with a very weak spot down here at what's called the toe of the stock. So what they would do is they would actually graft or glue on a separate piece to right. form the toe so that was stronger. Of course, over time, that glue weakens and you can get yeah. separation like this. So it's not truly a crack in this case. Yeah, but it's just some separation that's easily repairable, I assume. Right, so if you yeah. take the butt plate off, you could glue this, clamp it back down, and then once it's dried, put the uh, butt plate back on, it'd be basically the same as brand new. Gotcha, all right, easy enough. And from what it looks like here, it looks like we got ourselves a Dragoon, or Extragoon, right? Extragoon. So why do people get so up in arms about whether we call it a Dragoon or Extragoon? All right, so that goes back to the original 1891 Mosin Nagant. So, you know, it's a very long rifle. Right. And they had kind of cavalry versions and stuff. So Dragoons are soldiers that ride horses, but right. dismount for combat. So they're not cavalry, they fight on horseback. Well, they still need a shorter rifle to be able to handle on horseback when they're getting on and off. And so they created a shorter Dragoon model. Gotcha. Well, the thing is when the Russian army went to the 9130 and everyone got a shorter rifle, they basically just converted all the Dragoons into standard pattern 9130s. So you'll still see the receiver markings indicating yep. that it started life as a Dragoon model. And they're really cool markings too. Yeah, like, they are. I mean, you got all kind of fancy writing and stuff on there. Um, but that's why we call them extra Dragoons because they've been converted to a standard 9130 model, but they started life as a Dragoon card. Gotcha, okay, so it makes sense. So for all of you guys down in the comment section, every time I'd see it, it's like, they're not Dragoons, they're extra Dragoons. I got it, makes sense now, so very cool. And it looks like this one is an Achevis, uh based off of the writing and the manufacturer marking that we have on this guy and it being dated for 1925. That yeah. is pretty sweet. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. 
Um, so, you know, we have lots of different options here. So you, you have come across a couple of Chevisks. Yeah. Uh, here's a Tula. You can see that nice large Tula star that's right. very indicative on the receiver. Um, so that's really cool. Yeah, I always no. thought the Tula Star was kind of cool, and how how big they made it right. too, you know. Yeah. Now this is also considered a fair condition, so you can see there is some pitting on the receiver and bolt handle, and back here on the cocking piece. But again, it has, you know, mostly been blued over. It looks like there might be a little bit of kind of fresh rust, especially here on the uh, on the handle of the bolt. But uh, you know, again, this uh, you know being a fair condition, uh, but demonstrates you know hex receiver and a Tula manufacturer. Uh, so we're going to have several different SKUs for you to search through, right. depending on which options you want. So you'll have, you know, standard round receiver with Tula versus a Chef's. You'll have hex receiver with Tula versus a Chef's. In those SKUs, if you want a cracked option rifle for a discount, you'll be able to choose it under those respective SKUs. Um, and then we have some of our more uh, kind of esoteric options like extra goons will be under their right. own SKU. Gotcha. Okay, very cool. Now this one here I'm noticing, I haven't seen this before, at least working here. Uh, it's got a real light date, it looks like it says 1934 on it, and then a slash 45. Can you go into a little bit of detail about that? So we'll also have custom options for what we call double date stamps. Yeah. And uh, it's real basically, light. you know, it looks like the, the rifles were basically rebuilt. So they were, when they were, you know, reconditioned by the arsenal, when they were rebuilt, they, uh, they have a second date stamp. And that's a pretty rare thing, you know. Uh, so there is going to be a custom option amongst uh, the different SKUs where if we have a double date stamp available, you'll be able to choose that. There'll be a slight increased charge. Gotcha. But I mean, it's a really cool, you know, collectible thing because they don't do, uh, you don't see that that much. Right, gotcha. Okay. I'm gonna pick Very up cool. what looks like obviously the best looking rifle on the table. Yeah, that uh, one's pretty gorgeous. <laughs> I mean, so this one here, uh, you know, again, we have a, uh, an extra goon, it's hex receiver. I mean, I think the stock on this looks really nice. Yes. And the bluing on it looks very nice as well. So, you know, this is kind of the upper end of what we have for good condition, I'd say. Right. But, you know, if you are someone who's out there looking for the best possible condition, we do have hand select options available. Um, yeah. And I think this would probably be a good representation of what's out there. Again, it's the best out of 10 firearms, 10 rifles. Absolutely. So, you know, it could vary, obviously, but it is the best out of those 10 selected. So, for instance, if we were going to go for a hand select from all of these, it'd probably be that guy. Right, exactly. So Granted, can... under the correct variation or con uh, condition, not condition, but uh, the custom option that's selected as well, right? Exactly. So, you're yeah. going to have some limitations, you know, if you're choosing a specific option, we have to choose from 10 of those. But, you know, this gives a great demonstration of kind of how the hand select pro uh, process works. Right. We're going to look at 10 rifles and go, uh, okay, well, this is the best cosmetic exterior appearance. Yep. That would be the one we select. All right. Awesome. And we also saw one, I, I think you saw one that had a other example of a crack too. So it's not just oh, that toenail yeah. crack. So, you know, cracks are, are not, uh, well, the majority of what I've seen so far are just the toenail, uh, toe right. separation. Like this rifle is labeled as a crack and it, it doesn't look like it penetrates the entire stock if we look at the top, yeah. but there is obviously a line along the entire side. I'm not sure if that's an attempt at a repair or if someone maybe was trying to mount a scope to this at yeah, some point turn it into and they were sniper, trying to remove yeah. material to get to the side of the receiver. Right. But you know, this is also listed as a crack. And uh, so it's, well, the majority are gonna be like that. Yeah. There are the options for, for other types of cracks. Gotcha, okay. And I don't think we talked about this one just yet. This one is a round receiver, also a double date, it looks like, right? Yep, 1940, right. 45, and that one shows up really well. So you'll see that 1940 production and then the slash 45 on this is seven. And you can see how it's wrapping around the side. It's obviously right. like an afterthought. Like, yeah, right, which is super cool. Again, the, the amount of history and just probably the, the again, I, I always say this with surplus character, mm -hmm. the stories that these rifles could tell if they could talk would be pretty sweet, I think. And uh, this one definitely looks like a good code to me and that's what it's labeled as. And this thing is just gorgeous, guys. Now with surplus, I mean, we always like doing these videos because we want to make sure we're upfront with you guys about what you expect. Right. We want to show you, you know, like if you get a good condition rifle, this is what you can expect. If you're going to get a fair condition rifle, this right. is what you can expect. So, you know, guys, we're not trying to, to be, you know, uh, secretive in any way. We want you to know what to expect so that, you know, you're satisfied with your purchase. And so that's why we wanted to have a good selection of just about every option we could have here on the table. Right, and also too, if you guys are curious about how the grading works for surplus firearms, go ahead, head to our website, classicfirearms.com. In the product search, actually just type in grading and you'll see some additional search options off to the right-hand side. And we actually have an article all about the NRA surplus grading and how that's done and typically what's looked for, everything from a fair all the way to an excellent, uh, but everything that we've seen here are either fair 
fair cracked, which could be that toe separation or somebody trying to turn it into a sniper. <laughs> it could be a good or good cracked, uh, but that's pretty much all the conditions that we have right now, other than custom options like, you know, extra goon and things like that, right? Yep. Cool. Now, you know, uh, it's hard to believe anyone wouldn't be familiar with the 9130, but I feel like we kind of skipped over that a little bit, just yeah. what it is that we're selling here. So, you know, Russia through from 1891 through World War One into World War Two, they used the 9130, well, sorry, they used the 1891, then the 9130 uh, model of that. There are some other uh, variations on it. Of course, you know, we previously had carried, you know, a bunch of Finnish made uh, Mosin Nagants that they actually bought the receivers from Russia. But, you know, it's a standard bolt action rifle, 762 by 54 caliber, five round internal magazine, usually fed by stripper clips. You got a stripper clip guide here on the top of the receiver. And I mean, it's just a really cool classic surplus firearm. I mean, it's, again, it's kind of hard to believe that anyone who wouldn't be familiar with it, but yeah. I know that we've got a lot of new people out there who are getting into collections. And, yeah. you know, this is kind of always one of those basic rifles that uh, that you start a collection on is a, is a Mosin Nagant. Right, yeah, I think, yeah, I, I absolutely agree with that. And shooting them are a heck of a lot of fun as well, guys. And that 760 by 54 hour cartridge packs a punch. Mm -hmm. um, and it's still out there, which is good. And the fact that it's still being produced today, and like you said, the longest serving military cartridge, that's right. pretty impressive stuff, guys. So hey, we've got these 9130s for you. I think we've covered just about everything as far as grading, condition goes, custom options. If you guys have any com or questions or comments, let us know down in the comments section. And the last gun I'm gonna talk about is a little bit newer. A little bit newer, yeah. Just started a new giveaway, guys. And we got ourselves another LWRCI Reaper, which we got a Vortex Optic on. It's pretty sweet, guys. I am a huge fan of the Reaper platform by LWRC. And if you want to have a little bit more information on that and see it in action, go check out our video announcing that as our giveaway. Anything else, man? I don't think so. Just remember that the best way you're going to get entries for the giveaway, always going to be refer friends. You get the most bang for your buck. But, I mean, you can do anything. You can watch a couple of our videos, go right. visit product pages. There's plenty of ways to enter. Costs you nothing, but a minute of your time. Don't forget to sign up, guys. That's right. Absolutely, guys. And, of course, we always got that code word. Well, now we've got that secret code word. But if you want to know what the code word is, go watch the unveil video of the Reaper. We appreciate you guys. Go check out our 9130s. Appreciate your business. God bless. We'll see you next time at ClassicFirearms.com.